Alright everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So you can see my methane generator is right there behind this door and this is part two of my methane generator series. So it's been 12 days since I put that thing together and filled it up and uh, since then I have plumbed the gas outside as you can see because yes it was getting rather stinky. See the gas is coming out here and bubbling through the water. You see about what the rate is right now and ultimately the gas is going out through some tubes and into this beach ball here, which is just about full. It took about uh, two and a half hours to completely fill that. So I guess uh, the main thing right now is to uh, open up one of these tubes and see if I can get this to burn. So when I open this, the gas should be able to escape. Let's cut the end off that. Okay, let's see if we can get this to burn. How oh, would you look at that? I have gas. Such a pretty blue flame. You see that? Feel the heat coming off of it. So we do have methane. Let's see if I push on this ball. Let's see if it comes out faster. <laughs> so it's working. Excellent. The tube's beginning to burn. Let me close that off again. All right. I'm actually gonna put this gas to work now. This is, uh, my storage right now is full and it'd be impolite to release it off into the atmosphere. So I've got this copper tube right here. Copper, uh, unlike the plastic, won't burn. Got a little uh, lantern case. I'm gonna stick this tube in here if I can. That should just about do it. I've got the copper tube coming into the lantern and I've got the lantern affixed to the top of this here metal box. Let's uh, light this on fire. I've got the gas hooked up to the tube. And uh, there is a flame. There you go. It's a very quiet flame because that's about the rate that the methane generator is producing gas. But if I push on the uh, gas bladder, you can see that the flame increases substantially. Okay. Now, the flame is very difficult to see, actually. I'm not even sure if it's going to be picked up on the camera. I have a lantern mantle here. Let's uh, pull this out. Let's just drape this over... Blow it out first. Let's drape this right over top. That sh should help it burn and make it produce more light. Let's uh, get rid of the silk. There you go. A little lantern. If I push on the gas, you can see... Oh yeah. Let's go find a cover for it. So there is the completed lantern. A little gas mantle in there is burning. It's a tiny light, you know, probably dimmer than a candle, but it is working. There it is, and that's just the amount of gas that this generator is producing constantly. So theoretically it could stay on like this for as long as the methane generator is producing methane, which could be months. And of course, uh, if I wanted to get it brighter, I could put a weight on this uh, gas bladder here. You can see it'll brighten right up. Let's see, that's probably about the maximum. That's pretty, isn't it? And if I release, go back down to the standard level right there. You know what? I'm going to let this thing burn all night. I've designed it so the wind won't blow it out or blow it over. And the snow will just melt off the top. So it should do just fine. It'll burn up that methane so it doesn't go into the atmosphere and warm the planet. Although, right now that doesn't sound like a bad thing. <laughs> Looks like some deer tracks out here. But uh, let's have a look at this and see if it's still burning. There's no snow on top of it. That's a good sign. Yeah, it's still burning. It's kind of hard to see. But this up here, I can feel the heat. So there you go. It burned all night. Push on this gas bladder here. It brightens up. Yeah. So it looks like my bubbler didn't freeze. That's because I put some calcium chloride in the water. It's uh, 5 degrees Fahrenheit out here right now, so that's good. Since I have a bit of a thermal gradient going here, I thought I'd uh, put the Stirling engine on top and see if it'd run it. 
and it does. That'll probably go for quite a while until the bearings wear out even. <laughs> awesome. So uh, let's go have a closer look at the methane generator and I'll show you how it's doing. If you haven't seen the video of me building this, I'd recommend you go watch that video at some point. But uh, if you have watched it, I've made a couple of changes, like this extra blanket here. That's just to keep it a little bit more warm, use less electricity. I got it down to uh, consuming about a kilowatt hour per day of electricity to keep the tank at a nice cozy 87 degrees. Let's see, using an aquarium heater, that's working just fine. And actually, it's shut off, so it's actually at temperature. It's not consuming electricity at the moment. So yeah, um, of course I've plumbed the gas to the outside, as I mentioned earlier, a little water trap there. Okay, I did make this thing a little bit shorter because I actually plugged up the feed tube here and uh, I had to get this down in there so I could unplug it. So another piece of pipe, I could just stick this down in there and I was able to unclog a mass of material. Another change I've made is uh, this here. I've added some plumbing. And this is so I can get the material out of the tank easier. You see this pipe goes in and down into about halfway into the barrel. And the idea is when I put more stuff in, it displaces it and shoves some digested stuff out. So yeah, I can just open this valve here. Loosen this cap so that I don't get a siphon going and the uh, digested material will accumulate down here in this jug for me to uh, remove and add to my garden. So currently this is running off of rabbit droppings. As you can see I've got more there and it is producing methane gas off of it. But rabbit droppings is not the only thing I can put through this. In fact I can put a wide variety of materials through it. Uh, let's uh, go prepare something, uh, some food scraps around the house and I'll, I'll show you what you can actually put in here. So I raided the fridge and I've gone around the house and I've uh, collected an assortment of food wastes that I can actually put inside the methane digester. You got some uh, the poison pieces of bread loaf, some spaghetti with a white sauce that somebody saved but never ate, some uh, stale rice with sausage, a bunch of uh, greens, and uh, looks like strawberry tops. There's a piece of fish. I think this is, yeah, it's like a fish stick or something. There's a rotten onion, some uh, soybean husks, a little bit of uh, tomato sauce, which is rotten inside of the jar, and some spoiled milk. Of all these, these items here could go into a compost bin. And uh, this plate here could get fed to the bunnies. Uh, in fact, I think I will actually feed this to the rabbits and then of course their droppings will eventually make it into the methane digester anyway. But, uh, you know, the rabbits won't eat the soybean husks, they don't like onion, and bread's a little bit much for them. But methane digester can handle it just fine. Uh, things like this can't really go into a compost pile because it'll well, it'll really stink. You know, you can't put meat in a compost pile, it'll attract critters, and it doesn't really compost all that well. But that's in an aerobic environment. The anaerobic digester, first of all, you're not going to get any of the smell out if you've got it well sealed. But also, the conditions inside there and the bacteria are able to break down meat and oils much better than a ordinary compost heap. Soybean husks would be very difficult for my artificial cow stomach to break down, and so I must employ some artificial teeth. Okay, so there's the soybean husks ground up. Yes, not bad. I'd like them to be a bit finer, but they are quite tough, so it's probably good enough. Uh, continue this process and grind up the rest of this. So here is my material all ground up and ready to be put in the digester. Of course this is way too dry so I'm going to add some water and also wash this bottle out in the process. And uh, I guess milk kind of counts as a liquid that 
That is very stinky. Okay. Um, maybe don't do this indoors. I think in my previous video I mentioned a carbon-nitrogen balance. You see, nitrogen compounds are required in order to make protein. And, of course, bacteria can then break that protein down back into nitrogen compounds. Now, meat contains loads of protein, and so the meat will form lots of nitrogen compounds. In fact, it will form ammonia. Now, that's actually good, because the bacteria can then use that to build proteins in their own bodies, and eventually it'll end up in the fertilizer, and uh, it's good for the plants. However, too much ammonia, if you've ever smelled some ammonia, you'll know that it's uh, very toxic to life. And so too much ammonia can kill them. So meat needs to be done very sparingly. And I'd say add roughly 10 pounds of carbon-containing materials for every pound of meat at the bare minimum. So it seems that I've killed my Sterling engine over there. When I uh, let the stuff out of the tank, it dropped the gas pressure and must have extinguished the flame. Okay, so I'm just going to pour this into this funnel here. Just like that. Now it's uh, very important the stick stays in here. It might make it easier to pour without it, but the stick, I can agitate this and make sure it doesn't clog. Because uh, fixing clogs in this is rather difficult. I'm also going to add a little bit more rabbit droppings because I, I don't want to feed it entirely food scraps. You know, i got to get through these rabbit droppings eventually. So yeah, just keep that agitated so it'll actually make it into the chamber. And we're good. That's fed. Probably do that every few days, and it'll produce gas as long as I do that. Now that I've added a bit more material to the tank, let's open this valve and let some out. So I've decided I'm going to take all this insulation off temporarily. That's because uh, I want to upgrade the heating system. Uh, I never really intended for it. But a lot of people have requested me to see if I can heat the tank using the flame that this thing produces from the burning gas. And uh, I've done some rough calculations and I think it might actually be possible. The amount of uh, heat this produces, I think, would be just enough to keep itself warm. So, let's try it out. Maybe save on a little bit of electricity. Okay. Now I've got this insulation off, I guess I could show you what's going on inside the chamber here. So here's a view to the inside of the methane generator. You uh, mostly just see the foam that is now floating on top of the fluid. You see uh, now that methane production is underway, the uh, material has separated. All your lipids and stuff have floated to the top and have uh, made foam. In this video, taken about a week ago, you can see that there's no foam and you can actually see the bubbles coming up through the solution. At this time, there was still some air trapped inside the chamber, and so the bacteria was using an aerobic process to break down the organic materials, which is uh, chemically very similar to, say, burning wood. Once all the oxygen was consumed, the bacteria switched over to an anaerobic process that produced methane as a byproduct. So I just wrapped a piece of copper tubing around the barrel, as you can see, and I've coiled it up over here, and I'm going to be putting it inside of this little heater that I've built. So the idea here is that I'll burn the methane and it'll heat this coil, heating the water up, making it buoyant, and then the water will flow up and around the barrel and then come back through. So far so good. So this is what I've come up with. You can see I basically recreated the lantern, except this time I'm using it to heat the copper coils which are full of water. So that little flame is right down there. I guess now I'm just going to watch this and see if I'm actually saving any power. So this is where I'm going to leave the project for now. I will do a part three video, so look for that. But until then, see you next time.